Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Facebook Live. I'm your host, Jess. And I'm your host, Lauren. And today we have a really great topic, something everybody can relate to, and that is budgeting, money management, something that we can all do a little bit better at, and we can all use some tips. Um, But before we jump into all of that content, Lauren is going to give us our Facebook Live etiquette. Thanks, Jess. So uh, like Jess said, we're going to be talking about all things related to budgeting, maximizing your tax refund, getting your finances in order. Uh, So if you know anyone who needs to do a little financial spring cleaning, feel free to tag them in the comments so that they can join or share it to your own Facebook. That's totally cool too. Um, And feel free if you have any questions or comments or budgeting tips that have really worked for you, uh, please leave those in the comments as well because you know, we have our suggestions and ideas, but you guys all have great tips too. So let's hear them. Uh, the only thing we ask that you don't do is leave any personal information in the comments because that's public. Um, if you're a current student and you need to talk to us about something, you could actually message our Facebook page or give student services a call at 1 888 427 1000. If you're not, a Penn Foster student yet, but want to learn more about our programs, you can call admissions at 1-888-427-6500. So with that being said, let's get into the good content. We're going to talk about why create a budget, how to create a successful budget, budgeting tips, and budgeting for your education. If you're joining us today, budgeting for your education is probably something that's Uh, very much on your mind right now. So Jess, I'll throw the first question to you. Why create a budget? Well, you know, just basically, you know, obviously the definition of a budget is taking the amount of money that you have coming in every month and making sure that you can afford, you know, all of your essentials and then seeing what you have left over for all that other extra stuff. Um, an effective budget can really help you make the most of your tax refund. And anytime you get, you know, a little bit of extra money because you already have the money that's coming in budgeted out. So then when you get that extra money, you can apply those, you know, tips and tricks that you're already using with your, you know, regularly scheduled income to that money, which is awesome. Um, when you do budget, you always try to leave room to put some money in savings, and that helps so that you can save up for big expensive to make sure you and to make sure you can pay your bills each month. But at least you know you know you have that little safety net of money in case something ever comes up that you need, you know, a bigger lump sum for. And when you have your budget going and every month you are putting a little bit of money away, it's nice to have that, you know, little bit of security. And also building up your savings account, like we just said, an emergency fund, you know, it could be hospital bills, anything crazy like that, house, you know, things, you, your water heater goes, you need a new refrigerator, you know, those are things that are unexpected and you don't think about every day. But if something like that does happen, you know, God forbid, you have that safety net of money because you budgeted for it. You know what I mean? Those are all great points. And I think one benefit of creating a budget for the case of emergencies or even just to be able to meet your daily or monthly expenses is that it can save you a lot of stress when you do have something come up or when you're figuring out how do all these bills get paid, um, you know that you have a plan. And that's really what it comes down to, having a plan to make sure that your finances are as (laughs) not anxiety inducing as possible, that you're able to get everything that you need to do paid Um, and save money for the things that you'll end up needing, but also the things that you want too, the things that'll help you like return on investment things like your education or savings that, you know, you can invest and turn into more money later, things like that. So um, I, I think you made a lot of good points, Jess, in that, you know, your, your budget and knowing when to anticipate things like a tax refund or, a bonus from work or birthday money or something like that can really help you um, feel more confident in your spending. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, just having confidence in your finances makes it easier for you to also 
treat yourself to things and do things that are nice for yourself because you don't have to worry about, oh, well, if I make this choice to do this for myself or to, you know, do this, am I putting myself in a bad situation financially? If you are using your budget and you're sticking to it as best as you possibly can, you can make those decisions confidently and you don't have to worry about, you know, making that decision. And then a couple of weeks later being like, oh, I really shouldn't have done that, you know? And Obviously, you know, we can sit here and we can talk about budgets and how they're great and everything, but it's also just where do you do it? How do you create one? You know, what's what are the things that you should list? What things should you not list? Um, so how would you say, you know, anybody who's looking to go into creating a budget should go about doing that? Yeah, that's a good question. And it feels like it should be something that's easy, but it never is. No. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think for all of us, the goal is to stay out of debt or at least keep the amount of debt that we're in as low as possible. Um, figure out like what kind of debt is important to you. So like a car loan or a home loan or um, things like that may be something that you need to take on, but it's all in figuring that out. And that's where it gets complicated. Um, so where I would start is just taking a look at your income, um, map out your monthly income, you know, with taxes and all of your payroll deductions already taken out. Look at what is actually going into your bank account each month. Um, from there, I would start taking out your expenses. So all of your bills, Yep. Um, you can usually use an average or I know I get email alerts <laughs> with what everything will be for the month. And I kind of have like a notes app um, where I log those and then figure out what's going to be taken out. Uh, groceries, gas, um, things that you know, if you know you have kids, things that they'll need. There are those things that you know you're going to spend money on every month and you generally know at least roughly how much you're going to be spending. So take that take home pay and just first subtract out everything that you know is going to be deducted from your bank account. Um, from there, that's where you kind of start looking at the nice to haves or the wants. Um, I would say it's a great idea to um, put some in savings and look at that as a bill. So know that you know you're going to put $20 every paycheck into your savings account. Treat that like one of your bills so that you are always saving. Um, from there, you can see how much how much you got left. So what do you have for your entertainment um, costs? What do you have to treat yourself to a coffee or a manicure or a dinner out? Things like that that you want to do. Um, and think about how important those activities are when you are budgeting them. Um, is it good for like... I know for me, a nice manicure every now and again is just good for my mental health. Right. <laughs> um, and I'm sure, you know, going out with friends, going to dinner with your significant other, going to the movies with your kids, that's all important. Yes. And it all should be a factor in your budget, but it's just nice to plan for that um, and take all of that spending into account when you're figuring out your budget for the month. Um, there are also some apps that you can use that can help you budget. Um, so you can look into our Mint, Good Budget, Honeydew, and Truebill. And if you're somebody who just really still feels like completely lost with setting up your budget and your spending for the month, those can kind of help you um, get it a bit more organized. Yeah, I love what you said about taking things that you know you're going to spend money on and use and treating them like a bill. You know, same thing, like you said, take the money that you want to put away in your savings and treat it like a bill. Another thing that you can do is if you have direct deposit, you mm -hmm. know, for example, you can just, you know, decide, make your budget, decide how much you're going to put in savings every month. And then, you know, split up your paycheck, you know, go into your payroll system, you know, get your payroll um, paperwork again and refill it out and put, you know, this much money from my from every paycheck goes into my savings and the rest of it goes into my checking account and then you don't even know like you you missed it you don't have to yep. go in and transfer that money because that's something that you'll forget to do you know so a lot of um you know payroll systems make it really easy to split your paycheck up into different accounts and that can be really helpful um and i think too you know 
let's say, like you're saying, you love a manicure. Some people love to get a coffee every morning on their way to work. If you know how much you spend on coffee at Starbucks or Dunkin' every week, you know, take that, multiply it by the Mm -hmm. amount of days that you're going to spend it you're going to spend it in a month and factor that into your budget, at least that average. If you know that's something that you're not willing to give up because it just brings you a little bit of joy, you know, on your way to work, on your way home from work, whenever, you know, factor it into your budget and then you don't have to worry about that being an extra after the fact. That's a good point, Jess. And I think that having those extras factored into your budget could prevent you from feeling bad about it because when you're like thinking, okay, I definitely could have made this coffee at home from coffee that I already had, but instead I'm going to Starbucks and spending (laughs) um, a good amount of money on a coffee. Um, You're not going to feel that guilt because you know that that's something you accounted for and you're able to do it. Um, And it can just help you prioritize. But then, you know, you might say, okay, I bought a coffee. Maybe I don't need, maybe I can pack my lunch today. Maybe I don't need to buy lunch out too. Um, So it can kind of help you prioritize your spending in that way. Um, I also liked a point you made, Jess, about like already direct depositing money into your savings account, not even thinking about it coming out. Um, One great tip my mom once gave to me was um, in regards to like a 401k or Roth IRA. If you um, do have one of those, she said every time that you ever get like a bonus or a raise or a promotion or something where you're getting an increase in your paycheck, immediately up your percentage contribution in um, your Roth IRA or 401k or into your savings account because you won't even know that's like the perfect time to not even notice it's gone. So if you're ever in a position in your career where you're getting that pay increase, um, increase your savings because you won't even miss it. Yep, your your mom is a smart woman because <laughs> I guarantee you that my mom has said something very similar to me in the past. Um, <laughs> just as everybody's moms, you know, have those tips and tricks. That's that's a really really good point because then you're right. You don't even notice because you're yeah. the amount of money that you're that's going into your you know everyday spending is still the exact same. So it's not like you're missing anything, you know. But mm-hmm. you are saving more for like we said those big unexpected things or not even unexpected if you want if you're planning a vacation or you're planning a wedding or you have things like that going on um it's nice to have that little bit of money coming out that you don't even realize then when you do have to go and make those big payments it's already sitting right there for you you don't have to pull out a credit card you know you don't have to take out a loan you have that money you know already safe kept somewhere waiting for you you know um such a good point i think you know, another important thing to know is there are more expenses that aren't just bills. You know, like you said earlier, you think about groceries. Going to get groceries isn't a bill, but it's something that you definitely should include on your budget because you're going to spend that money no matter what. And sure, every time you go to the grocery store, you're going to spend a different amount of money. So it's not easy to just say, oh, well, here's, you know, a hundred bucks for the whole month for all my groceries. But you can, you know, as time goes on, take down how much your grocery bills are and then create yourself kind of an average for how much you spend every month. And then that'll make it easier when you go to, if you have to rewrite your budget or you want to add your groceries into your budget, you kind of have an idea of how much you spend on average. Some months it might be a little bit more and some months it might be a little bit less, but at least you're not over or underestimating by like a crazy amount. Um, And another thing that I think we always, you know, forget about, me in particular, because I am the queen of subscription services. (laughs) I have every single one, HBO Max, Netflix, Hulu Live, all of them, you know, those things add up to probably a couple hundred dollars a month. And it's something you don't think about because you're like, oh, Netflix is $10.99. I'm not going to worry about that. Oh, this one's so true. $12.99. I'm not going to worry about that. But you really should add those things up because those are steady costs coming out every single month. So it's easy to add into your budget and easy to see how much you're spending on those things. I'm not saying that you should look at them and then, you know, say, oh, I'm spending too much. If that's mm-hmm. something you enjoy, you know, keep it, keep it going. But including it in your budget, again, helps you feel less bad about it, like we were saying before. It's so true. It's also a good time to check and see if you're still using all of your subscription services. Um, I know in 2020, when the pandemic began and 
we were just everything was closed. Um, I subscribe to like food delivery services because you would save money on um, on the fees for the apps. And I kind of just kept it going even when things reopened and I wasn't getting as much delivery. And then I was like, why am I paying for this? Um, so it's always good to kind of do a check in every couple months and make sure, you know, if you subscribe to a TV or a movie streaming service for one show and then you finish the show, you might not need to keep paying for it if you use something else. So um, it's just always good to kind of check in on those things and make sure you really need everything that you're uh, subscribing to. Another one that like pops up in my head is gym memberships. Oh yeah. You know, you sign up for a gym membership and a lot of people, you know, stop going to the gym and forget that they're paying for it. So you're a hundred percent right. You know, every couple of months just going through and taking stock of these things that are coming out every month and making sure you're using them. And we all know it's a big pain to go cancel a gym membership. But if you're not using your gym membership, go cancel it. And I'm telling you this now. Jess, I have a funny story about this. I um, was a member of a gym that was like $10 a month. So I kept my subscription because I was like, I'm going to use it. I'm going to go. It's going to be great. I'm going to be so fit. And then I ended up moving and I needed to cancel it. So I went in to cancel and they were like, are you sure? Can't you just like still like drive to this gym and come? And then they read to me the last time that I visited the gym, which was a year and a half earlier. It was so bad. Um, and I was like, no, if I haven't used it in a year and a half, I'm definitely not coming now. But um, I did lie to myself that I would go to the gym. That's what I did. It, and it was bad. So that's a good call out. Uh, be real with yourself. <laughs> you can always resubscribe to the gym. You're right. If yes. you want to go back. But I think, you know, it's important to be realistic with yourself about what you're actually going to do and what you actually need to spend money on because you could just be literally throwing money away yep. over something that you think you might get back to or think you might be into and it's not really working out for your lifestyle. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, all of these things being said, bills, groceries, subscriptions, memberships, all that stuff. That's all the stuff you're going to start with your, you know, monthly income and you're just going to subtract all these things. You can do it on a piece of paper. I mean, obviously we have these apps that work great, but if you know you just want to do a quick one, you write down how much you're making every month, you subtract all of that, all of those things, those averages, those bills. And then after that, how much of your monthly income do you have left? And then you have to decide what you're going to do with the rest of that. You know, and that's the amount that you have things that you can spend on things that aren't included in your budget. Like, you know, maybe you do want to take a little bit more and put it into your savings account every month because you know you're not going to spend it. Or perfect time to tell yourself how much you can treat yourself to a month without putting yourself in, you know, on a financial strain. You know, mm -hmm. I'm the kind of person who loves a DoorDash. I love an Uber Eats. I love to, you know, order myself food and treat myself. But you know, a couple months ago, I did a budget of my own when I started planning for my wedding. And I realized that I just can't possibly spend that amount of money that I was spending to have, you know, to order in food, especially when I looked at how much I was spending on groceries. Um, it really kind of puts in per into perspective what you feel like you can and can't do. And that's not to say that you shouldn't do those things for yourself, but you also don't want to put yourself into debt or put yourself under financial stress for those things, you know? It's so true. I know with that being said, um, we did have a couple other budget tips that we wanted to mention. And I think going off of, you know, your points just about just like, I don't know, I just think being realistic with yourself is a really good theme to keep in mind and it goes back to a lot of what we've been talking about um if you you know it's being realistic in terms of like maybe i have a wedding coming up so i can't afford to like door bash myself every meal or go to continue a gym membership that i haven't touched in over a year um but it's also about not being too hard on yourself too like if you make yourself this awesome budget and you take out all of your monthly expenses, you um, are planning to put money into your savings, you have every dollar accounted for, 
that's probably, I mean, you might be somebody who operates really well in a strict situation like that, but for most people, that's not going to work. Um, you need to think about like, okay, you know, like for you, Jess, you can say, I'm going to cut out all of my uh, food <laughs> delivery situations, but then you're going to have a day where you're just like, oh, it's raining. I need it. Or oh, I just don't want to go out today. I need it. And you're just going to set yourself up to fail and set yourself up to feel bad. Yep. And that isn't going to work. And it's not ultimately at the end of the day, that's not going to help you be a successful budgeter. You're right. So be realistic about the things that you know, knowing you as a person, you will spend money on yes. and account for those in your budget. And don't be too hard on yourself with crazy goals that are just not really feasible for you and your lifestyle. Um, yeah. I think with that too, like be flexible. Don't punish yourself if you slip up now and again. Budgeting is hard, especially yep. if you've never done it before. Um, don't be hard on yourself if you, you know, the first month you do it, if you slip up a little bit. Just keep working at it. You'll get there. The more you get into practice with good budgeting, I promise the easier it'll become. Yep, you're 100% right. And um, I think it's also a good idea to, you know, hold yourself accountable by telling a friend or, you know, like we were talking about our moms earlier, you know, if there's anybody who's good at, at keeping you accountable, it's your mom. But, you know, let a friend know that you're trying to budget so that, you know, if you do go to, you know, spend a bunch of money or you know do something that you're not sure if you should do you know you can say hey i'm thinking about doing this and then you can talk it out with somebody it doesn't have to all be in your own head and again like more said budgeting is hard i cannot stress that enough you know we live in a crazy world where there's a lot of expenses there's a lot of things that you don't take into account you don't think about you know you might do your first budget and then that might that month might go by and you're like oh i completely forgot to include gas and I drive to work, you know, every day. So then the next month, you know, you factor that in and then you adjust. Um, so I think, you know, being accountable to yourself, but also if you need help doing something like that, being accountable to somebody else can really help you um, stick to those goals. And, you know, we keep, you know, we can keep talking about budgeting till we're blue in the face, but you have to allow yourself, you know, for those fun things, those treats in your budget you know if you get rid of all of the fun it'll be even harder to stick to because you're not going to want to stick to it because yes we all work and we all we yet we work to make money to pay bills to have cars you know to just live our lives but we also work to have that money to spend on ourselves to just do things that make us happy and you know like lauren said earlier a manicure is great for her mental health you know sometimes i'm having a bad mental health day and i need to door dash that food and i don't feel bad about it because you know that's just something that we all need to do for ourselves we need to all be easier on ourselves and do those things for ourselves so make sure to include money in your budget for those fun things because what's life worth living without them you know it's so true and i think too like in the grand scheme of things like one outing to the movies or I don't know, getting some, some sushi DoorDash for lunch or something like that. Like spending 20 bucks is like a reasonable treat yourself situation. But I think, you know, just keep it again, keep it reasonable. Like you don't probably don't need a new phone every time one comes out. You probably <laughs> don't need to get, you know, a a new car that's just going to keep you in car payments forever and ever and ever the second you get bored of the one you have those are big purchases yep um so you know if you're feeling like you're in a rut you need to shop don't you know go into your favorite online clothing retailer and hit purchase on your whole cart because <laughs> that uh might be a bigger uh treat yourself purchase but um you know finding the little things to kind of keep your fun spend within reason and do things that you need for your mental health, your soul, your social life, your relationship um, to make you feel better. That's all really important. And 
I think a big uh, part of that too is there are ways to like treat yourself in, you know, we talk about all the fun stuff, but there are ways to treat yourself by investing in yourself too. Yes. Um, and, you know, we said before, if you're watching, you are probably somebody who's already doing that by investing in your education. And that's something that you're, you know, putting in some money for that now, but it could mean if you, you know, get on the career path and uh, keep pushing forward in what you want to do that you could be making more money later on. That's the goal, right? So, yep. um, you know, things like that are really important to keep in mind when you're figuring out your budget because uh, ultimately another thing that helps budgeting become easier is making more money or being in a career where you, you know, maybe the hours are better and you have more time to enjoy your life or whatever, whatever your end goal is, you're probably here because you do want to improve your life in some way through uh, getting the skills you need to get into the career you want. And that's a very valid part of your budget. Yeah, absolutely. And can, you know, you take that, you make that room in your budget to budget for your education. And then, you know, you get your education and you get that job and then you get to redo that budget with your new income and you get to, you know, a lot more money to put away or, you know, to spend on that vacation you always wanted. And it makes it all really, really worth it at the end of the day. And, you know, we all know that getting an education can be expensive. But, you know, here at Penn Foster, we offer monthly payment plans. So you can, you know, go and get your degree or your diploma and, you know, it fits into your budget and it fits into your lifestyle, which is at the end of the day, the best kind of education you can get is one that doesn't put that financial stress on you. It's so true. And, you know, your time is an investment too. So um, we always say when you're considering, if you're not a student yet, or if you are, and you're considering more education, look at job descriptions or the job that you're aiming to get into and really look at the skills and the credentials that you need to get that specific job, like a bachelor's degree, they could be great for certain fields and for certain people, but they are a lot of time and a lot of money. And not every job requires that. So it's just good for you. Think about what you want to do and what you need to do it because you might be able to invest a little less and have that make and get, you know, a certificate program or um, you know, some kind of credential and have that mean a lot for your career if you take that credential and then work really hard at applying for jobs and uh, making those connections and getting into the industry that you want. And it could be a boost in your confidence too, to have that be on the career path you want and um, have the income that you want. So um, I think with all of this, it's just important to be honest with yourself Think about your goals. Think about, you know, even when we talk about budgeting, like what are your financial goals outside of, uh, you know, paying your bills or investing in school, things like that. Like what, do you have a savings goal? Do you have other things that you want to do? Um, so take that look inward and figuring out the things that are important to you, figure out what is going to really improve your life because it is hard to save money and it's hard to spend money on, you know, something like school when you could be spending it on going out with your friends, but it could help you reach those goals that are going to make you feel better about yourself and your life and, you know, have that confidence. And so it's worth it in that situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Obviously, you know, making a budget and sticking to it is hard work, but you're a hundred percent right, Laura. And I loved what you said about, you know, looking at the skills that a job can require and seeing if you need to go get that bachelor's degree, because you might just need to go into a certificate program or, you know, something that could put less financial strain on you and can still get you that job. You know, they always say work smarter, not harder, but sometimes that really is the the end goal, you know, and sometimes you can save yourself a lot of grief or save yourself a lot of time or save yourself a lot of money by just putting in that little bit of extra, you know, looking into something else. And that's something great that, you know, Penn Foster offers is we offer all different kinds of, you know, degree diploma programs and we 
probably have one that will work for you no matter what kind of field or industry you're going into. So if you are interested in something like that, make sure you give us a call or you check out our website. There's lots of information there that can help you reach those goals. And happy budgeting, everyone. Hopefully after watching this, you'll take a look at um, you know your financial goals, map out a plan to reach them, and it will help you feel better when you have that plan and you kind of get your finances organized. So good luck. Um, I'm sure we'll be talking about this again. If you want more resources, definitely have them on the blog. Um, if you have any great tips that you didn't get to share with us in the comments today, um, send them to our inbox or leave a note on our Facebook page. And uh, who knows, you might reshare some of those good tips yes. uh, because we love to, um, you know, share what works for you with everybody else because you might help somebody else with your tips and advice. But thank you so much for joining. We always love catching up with all of you and we will see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.